Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to add and remove a UI widget, a user widget from your game or whatever project that you're working on. So what I have in the scene right now is I just have a mutator zone, I have the base turned on, but I have the zone turned off. And then I just have a verse device in the scene and that's, and that's it. And so the rest of this is just in the code. So let's take a look at that. And like I said, I've tried to make this as simple as possible. And I've also left a link to a tutorial I just did on the map. The biggest insight that I've had in doing this whole thing is how important the map is to this whole process of creating a user interface. And the reason why the map is important is because we use that to store a reference to the player's user interface. And if we don't have that, we can't remove the widget. So this is not an optional feature, this is a required feature because we need some way to store references to our player's UIs. Kind of have a note right here that says you need a map to store the widget in a variable to reference it later. So in this particular example, we have a variable, it's called my map. In the brackets is the key and following the bracket is our data type, which is a text block optional. So that means that it's either going to be a text block or a false value in this container. And where we unpack this is we unpack it way down here at the very end here, where we go to my... So if player actually references the key here, and when that, with that question mark, it unpacks the, whatever's in the container. And if there's a UI in there, then it's going to sign it here to my UI down here. And then here we create an at editable with the mutator zone. And then here we create a message type called my message and we're just calling it hello world. And then here on begin play, we create two functions here. One is to add the UI and one is to remove the UI. And because they're being called from the mutator, it requires an agent to come in and we're going to need that agent anyway. So all works out very well. So my mutator references the mutator zone device up here, subscribe binds it to the event. And then here we call add UI when we enter the mutator zone and when we exit, we remove the UI. And here's the code. Now notice this code duplicates really. This first line of code here is kind of duplicates. And basically what this line does is it goes and it gets all the agents, converts them to players, and then with the player, we're able to go get the player UI. Only players have UIs. So we go and get the player UI. And then once we get the player UI, then we, down here, we instantiate a new UI. And this is the bare bones UI of all time. It's just a text block. That's all it is. But it holds text. So it's perfect for examples like this. So we create a text block. And within the text block, if I hit control and click into it, you can see all the things that we can do to it. And if we click on its base here, if you go to text base, you'll see all these things that we can instantiate on it here in the beginning. The justification, the opacity, all kinds of different things. But here I'm just setting the text with my message that I set up here, and I'm just giving it a color using the colors module here. And we're calling it new UI. And then here, we're calling player UI, add widget, new UI. So this creates our UI. And then lastly, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and update our map with a reference to our text block, to our new UI. So we have our player reference up here and then we have referencing its text block here, the new UI. So that's all set. So then once the player leaves, the mutator zone, we make another call down here and it's the same thing all over again. We go and find the agents, we convert them to players. And then with the player, with, once we have the player, we call it an if player, we can get the its UI. And then what we do is we go ahead and here's where our map comes in. We call to our map and here with the question mark there, the query operator there, we can basically unpack our value here and assign it to a new variable called my UI, which is of the text block type. And I just have this in there for clarity, but you don't even need this in there because it knows what type it is. So I could actually just get rid of text block here if I wanted to, to make it even simpler. But I leave it in there so it's clear what's happening. So we're using our map and we're extracting 
the text box reference out of it and putting it into my UI. So then we go player UI, remove widget. Now it knows what to remove specifically and it and then it can remove that text block from the UI. And that's it. So using this as kind of a skeletal framework or the basic framework, we can then start building out from here and creating more and more complex widgets and user interfaces with a lot more features than this. So anyway, if I come back in here and I go to verse build, verse code, no errors, I can close this in the game and then push those changes. So if I come in here and I go start game, you'll see there's a mutator zone over there and I go into it you'll see hello world comes up in the upper left hand corner right and it should stay there as long as I stay there so as long as I stay in the mutator zone it'll stay there and then once I leave it'll go away and then if I come back it'll pop back up so it's just a really great way to start the building of an interface so anyway I hope you found this helpful take care have a great day and I'll talk to you next time.